ITONG 2023 prelim paper for P6, paper 2. Let's look at question 1. Use all the digits 9, 2, 0, and 3 to form the greatest possible odd number. So for it to be an odd number, the last digit has to be an odd number. And the odd numbers that we have will be 9 and 3. So since we want the greatest possible, we're going to use the smaller odd number to be in the ones place. So the last number will be a 3. Now, arrange them in descending order for the rest. So you have 9, 2, and 0. 9, 2, 0, 3. Part B, the number closest to 3,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. This is 3,000. Uh, let's go a 1,000 down and a 1,000 up. It's 2,000 and 4,000. Now, if I, I were to form uh, numbers that is as close as possible to 3,000. I'm looking at 2,000 plus and also 3,000 plus, right? Because there's a 2 and a 3. So you can technically put a 2 or a 3 in the thousands place. So the largest possible 2,000 numbers in the 2,000s will be 2,930. Nine, 2, Okay. Then the nearest number that is in the three thousands will be three thousand and so three zero two nine. So now we compare to see which one is closer. Here there is a difference of 70 and here there is a difference of 29. So this one is nearer, so 3029. Question 2. A roll of ribbon is cut into three pieces in a ratio 7 to 3, uh, 7 to 2 to 3. Shortest piece is 42 cm. What is the length of the longest piece? Okay, so the shortest piece is 2 units. So we can say that 2 units is 42. Then we find 1 unit, 42 divided by 2. And then uh, find the longest piece, which is 7 units. So 7 times 21, 147 cm. Question number 3. Uh, figure 1 shows a right-angled triangle. Figure 2 is made up of four such right-angled triangles. And there is a square in the middle. Find the sum of angle A, B, and C. So for angle... Okay, angle C is here. This is a 19 degrees, right? So... um. Sorry, C is not the 90 degrees, but C is this angle here. So if I were to put it, so basically this is also C. So if I were to look at this, um, or rather look at this triangle here, you have a 90 degrees. So A and C is actually 180 minus 90. So 180 minus the right angle. Because uh, angles in a triangle adds up to 180. Next, uh, we need to find angle B. Angle B is within a square and the square is cut diagonally. So B is actually half of uh, a right angle. So angle B... is 45 degrees. So the sum of all the angles will be 90 plus 45, which is 135 degrees. Next question four. 
table below shows the grades of 120 students who joined a math competition. Grade A is the best grade and grade E is the worst grade. Only 7 out of 20 of the students made it through to the second round. What was the minimum grade required to go through to the second round? Now, if we say that uh, 7 out of 20 made it through, right? We're looking at the top, top 7 over 20. So let's find our 7 over 20 of 120. 7 over 20 times 120. So you can just simplify this, you get uh, 42. So we are talking about the first 42 from the top. So the top grade is A, right? So you start counting 42 from uh, A. So 15, let's add 27. If I take 15 plus 27, this will give me 42. Okay, so this is A, this is B. What is the minimum grade? Uh, we can say that uh, it's actually grade B. So anything after that, you will not get through. Question 5. The area of rectangle ABCD is 1728 square cm. Length of FE is 5 6 of the length of AD. So FE is 5 units, AD is 6 units. What is the area of ABE, triangle ABE? So uh, firstly, we look at triangle ABD. If I were to cut it into half, what would I get? Uh, okay, so let's say I have this rectangle, right? And I cut it into half exactly. What is the area I'm looking at? I will get 1728 divided by 2, right? Half, which is 864. Now, if you look at triangle ABD, and triangle A, B, E. Uh, okay, firstly, I can't find A, D because I don't know the length. Okay, if you don't know the length, uh, you, it's very hard to find the breadth. Because if I know A, D, I would be able to find F, E quite easily, right? But I don't have A, B, so I cannot find A, D. So what I'll do is I'll compare the two triangles, A, B, D, as well as A, B, E. Now, these two triangles have something similar, which is the base, okay, AB. So, ABD, we take the base as AB. ABE, we'll take the base as AB as well. Now, for two triangles that have the same base, what is the ratio of their heights? So, if we talk about height, right, uh, we are talking about FE. To AD, which is 5 to 6. Now, for the two triangles which have the same base, uh, the ratio of the area will actually follow the ratio of the height. Okay, so when we talk about area, uh, we're talking about triangle ABE to triangle ABD the ratio will be the same. So now, this triangle ABD, right, is 6 units. So what we want to find is actually 5 units. So 6U is 864. 1U is 864 divided by 6 which is 144. Now, uh, 5 units is what we want. So 5 times 144, which is 720. So the answer, 720 square cm.
Okay, so for this question, you need to understand the proportionality concept. When two triangles have the same base, the ratio of the area will follow the ratio of the height. Next, question six. The pie chart shows the CCAs of 300 students in school. So what percentage of them are in dance club and brownies? Okay, so we have robotics, 15%, Ushu, 30%, track and field is uh, one quarter, 90 degrees, right? So one quarter. One quarter is 25%. So the rest of it will be 100 minus 15 minus 30 and 25%. Sorry, percent. which is 30%. Okay, so answer is 30%. Okay, next. Part B, the ratio of the number of students in dance club to the number of students in brownies is 3 to 2. How many students are in brownies? Okay, so dance club to brownies 3 to 2. A three to two, and we are talking about the thirty percent. Okay, so if you want to find the exact number, let's find out what's thirty percent of three hundred first. This will give us ninety. So actually, five units is ninety, because um, ninety is the total of dance club and brownies then we find one unit 90 divided by 5 which is 18 uh, brownies two units so we find two units so answer 36 students next question 7 a figure below shows an empty container. All edges meet at right angles. When a tap is turned on, water flows into the container at a rate of 2.01 lit, uh, liters per minute. So how much time is needed to fill the, com uh, the container completely? So what we're going to do first is to find the total volume of this whole container. So I have the measurements for uh, this right side, this cuboid on the right. But for the left side, I know the breadth is 14, but uh, for the length is 42 minus 24. Okay, so let's find the right side first. 20, uh, 24 times 14 times 20. Okay, so uh, 14 times fourteen times 24 times 20, length times breadth times height. This will give us 6, 7, 2, 0. Then now for the cuboid on the left side, to find the length, the side, we'll take 42 minus 14, which is 18. So 18 is here. Then to find the volume, length times the breadth, which is 14, times the height, which is 85. This part here is 14. This will be 2, 1, 4, 2, 0. Now to find the total volume. We'll add them up, 6, 7, 2, 0, plus 2, 1, 4, 2, 0. 28140. Because the rate is in liters per minute, we're going to change this to liters. So 28140 cubic cm is actually 28.14 liters. So how much time will it take 
every minute you're going to get 2.01 liters. If you need 28.14 liters, then the time taken will be 28.14 liters divided by the amount you get in every minute, which is 2.01. Okay, so the answer is 14, 14 minutes because the rate is per minute, so 14 minutes. Question 8. Trapezium T is drawn on a square grid below. This is trapezium T. In a square grid below, you're supposed to draw a square that is twice the area of trapezium mm -hmm. Z. So uh, let's figure out what is the area of trapezium Z, uh, T. So trapezium T, right, is okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And these two, uh, these, these triangles at the side can combine to give you two more. So total area is eight squares. So now you need to draw a square with twice the area. Twice the area, so eight times two, which is 16. And if the area is 16, 16 is four times four. So each side is four. So actually, um, on the diagram, they didn't remove, but it's already drawn quite faintly. Let me darken the lines. This is what a square would look like, okay? So use a ruler and draw. Make sure you draw thick enough. Okay, then next, uh, in the square grid below, draw a parallelogram with twice the area of trapezium T. So trapezium T is this. Now, I know a lot of students get um, struggle with this type of questions where you're supposed to draw uh, a different diagram, but same parameter. Now, um, we look at this in two parts. One is the horizontal lines, and then the other is the, uh, the diagonal lines. Horizontal lines are uh, how many lines do we have? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, right? So you have eight horizontal lines. Now, if you want twice the perimeter, we're going to double the diagonals and we're going to double the horizontals. So we have eight horizontal lines. times two. Okay, so you know a parallelogram, right? Uh, there will be a line at the top and then a line at the bottom. And I will say that since I want eight, uh, two times of eight, right? So I'll, I'll do eight at the top and eight at the bottom. Okay, then next. These diagonal lines, right? You need to double it. So the direction of the diagonal doesn't matter. It can go like this way as well to form your parallelogram. So uh, you want double of that. So you see this line cuts across two squares, right? Then you need another set of it. Okay, so what do I need? Let's draw the, the 8 cm of line at the top first. What are wait? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm leaning slightly to the right because my I'm gonna draw a diagonal uh this way. Okay. So remember I need like double of these two, right? So I'm gonna draw this on one side and then I'm gonna extend it another time. So cut across two squares first and then cut across another two squares. All right, so I know for sure that is double. Next. Draw another eight, and then um, the diagonal on the other side, you need to double. 
But of course, you want to make it a parallelogram. So you go in the same parallel line. One, two. Okay, so that's how I double the diagonals and also double the horizontals. So now I have parameter, which is twice that of trapezium T. Okay, question nine. There were 45 soccer balls, 30 basketballs, and 68 ping pong balls in the PE room. After 80 balls were added, the number of soccer balls increased by 40% and the number of ping pong balls increased by 20%. What was the percentage increase in the number of basketballs? So basically, this 80 is um, all the different types of balls added, but we don't know how many of each. Okay. So let's start off with soccer balls. We have 40, uh, 45 basketballs, 30 and ping pong balls, 68 at first. Now I know the change for soccer balls, right? Let's let's find out what is the increase. I want to know like out of 80, right? How many of them are soccer balls? So they said that soccer balls increased by 40%. Okay, so let's find 40% of S. So 40 over 100 times 45, which is 18. Uh, then next, the ping pong balls, which is increased by 25%. So 25% P is 25 over 100 times 68. 17. So I know the soccer balls increased by 18, ping pong balls increased by 17, but the overall increase is 80. So what's the rest? The rest will be the increase in the basketball. Which is 80 minus 18 minus 17. You get 45. So what's the percentage increase in the number of basketballs? Now, um, percentage increase, you have to use increase over the original times 100%. Okay, you need to know this if you don't already know. 45 over what is the original? When we talk about the increase in number of basketballs, right? We're comparing against the number of basketballs at first, which is 30. Then uh, times 100%. So take note that actually 45 is not the number of basketballs in the end, but that is just the increase. Okay, it is just, it is the increase the additional that you're getting. So do not take 45 minus 30. Okay, is it, it, it means that originally, originally you have 30 and then you add on another 45. Not add on 15, but add on 45. So your increase is 45 over original 30 times 100%. So this increase is more than 100%. Okay, so 150% is the answer. So don't, don't be mistaken um, and say that, oh, because this is more than 100% then the increase is 50%. No, your increase can be more than 100%. Basically means it more than double. Okay, question 10. Both Farah and Jamil left their houses at the same time to go to the park. Farah travelled 20 km from her house to the park at an average speed of 30 km per hour. Jamil travelled from his house at an average speed of 42 km per hour and reached the park 15 minutes later than Farah. What was the distance between Jamil's home and the park? Okay, if we look at Farah first, right? This is Farah's home. She's traveling at 30 km per hour. And this is 20 km. This is the park. Now, um, what I'm going to do is to find the time taken. Since I have distance, I have speed. I want to find a time taken because I want to know how much time Jamil takes later on. 
So they say that he reached the park 15 minutes later than Farah. So let's find the time taken for Farah. So uh, for speed, right, time taken is distance divided by time, uh, distance divided by speed. So the distance is 20, the speed is 30. So this is two third of an hour. Now two third of an hour, if you want to change to minutes, you have to times 60, you'll get 40 minutes. And the time taken for Jamil, since Uh, since Jamil took reached the park 15 minutes later, right? It means that um more time is taken. More time is taken, we have to add. So 40 minutes plus 15 minutes, which is 55 minutes. Now the thing is, um, if I want to find distance, right, I will take time times speed. But the speed for Jamil is km per hour. So I need to change this time to hours. So to change to hours, you divide by 60. 55 over 60, which is 11 over 12 hours. Okay, so distance is distance for Jamil. Oops, uh, speed times time. So the speed as given in the question is 42 km per hour. And the time taken is 11 over 12. Make sure it's in hours. Key into your calculators or you should get 38.5. So answer 38.5, since we're finding distance, this is in km. How do we know it's km? Because here it says km per hour. So your distance that you find will be in km. Question 11. STUV is a trapezium. So trapezium has a pair of parallel lines, which is indicated already. Then UV... U, V, W, X is a rhombus. Find angle Y. So uh, whenever you see the word rhombus, right, two things should come to your mind, which is um, which are the parallel lines, or opposite lines are parallel, and then um, you have equal sides. Okay, so uh, students tend to forget that they have four equal sides in a rhombus. Right, okay, so for a uh, rhombus, opposite angles are equal. So this is 78 degrees. Angles between parallel lines. So whenever you have parallel lines, they are very useful. You can apply different properties. So one of the properties is your interior angles. For angles between the parallel lines, they add up to 180 degrees. So let's find out this one. Angle TUV. So 180 minus 122. 58 degrees. So to find angle Y, which is uh, angles at a point, we use 360 to minus off. 58 and 78. So answer 224 degrees. Question 12, there were a total of 2,120 students at the school parade at first after 536 boys and one quarter of the girls left. The ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls became 4 to 9. How many more girls than boys were there at the parade square in the end? So starting with total, okay, let's do before change after. So starting with total. There is a change, and for the boys, you are minusing 536, because 536 of them left. For the girls, 
one quarter left. So we minus one quarter. Now, 536 is, is, is the actual value of something, right? But one quarter is a proportion of a certain total. Okay, how, how big is it? How What is the actual value? We don't know. So if it's a proportion transfer, you will have to do uh, your BCA below, before change after. So taking away one quarter means that you start off with four units. You take away one unit and you're left with three units. Okay, so this is how we present. Then in the end, the ratio of boys to girls became 4 to 9. So whenever you have more than one set of ratio, which we do in this case, here and here, we need to find common base. So what is the common base between these two ratios? It is the number of girls in the end. Okay, so here, this 3, you have to change it to 9. So it times 3. And then you have to change the rest. So 12, 3 and 9. Alright, so now you can use the ratios. Um, you can compare the ratios this way. So what I'll do is I'm going to go from left to right. Or you can try and figure out what is 2120 in terms of the numbers and the units given. Or you could do from left to right. So I'll start with the total, 2120. Minus 536. Okay, so maybe I'll just highlight. So starting with this, this is what? This is the change, and this is the change, and you end up with this in the end. Okay, so 2120 minus 536 minus 3 units. Anything in ratio is in units equals to 13 units. Okay, so now we work on this equation 2120 minus 536 is 1584. 1584 minus 3u. So we are keeping everything else. All right, so we are only changing this part here to get this 1584. Now, if you look at this equation, logically, how many units would this be? So do I take like 13 minus 3 or 13 plus 3? If uh, something minus 3 units, you get 13 units, right? This number has to be bigger. So this is actually 16 units, right? So uh, once you've determined the units, please always check. 16 minus 3, yes, you get 13 units. So 16 units is... 1584, then one unit is 1584 divided by 16, which is 99. Okay, then next, uh, the question is asking how many more girls and boys were there in the end. So we're finding difference, the difference between girls and boys in the end will be 9u minus 4u. 5u. Okay, so 5u is 99 times 5, which is 495. So answer 495. Question 13. Charlie Port pancake mixture into two types of containers with different capacities as shown below. He poured half, half the mixture into big containers and the other half into small containers. He filled the containers to the brim. Charlie used 24 more small containers than big containers. How many big containers did Charlie use? For this, I'm going to use something like uh, the method we use for average, the redistribution concept. Uh, okay, so let's write down, draw out what it looks like first. For the big containers, you can fill up 375 ml each. Okay, so um, 
we don't know how many of this, but but this is how we represent it. Okay, so three seven five many bottles. Don't know how many. Then for the small ones, it's a uh, seventy five each. So it looks like there's the same number here, right? So, but it, there's actually uh, 24 more small ones. So for the small, I'm going to add 24 times of this. So every circle represents one bottle. Now, because they said that uh, he poured half into big and half into small, right? Technically, this whole thing will have equal volume as the bottom one. Okay, so the top, the total for the top has to be the same as the total for the bottom. Now, if you compare left side, right side, on the right side, there is, it seems like there's this extra, although we said the total volume is the same, right? So let's find out what is this 24 times 75 first. This will give us 1800. Now, if we compare the right side, it seems like there is this extra 1800. But uh, not really. The top has to be the same volume as the bottom because it's half in half for the big and half for the small. So on the left side, it means that when you compare the top and bottom, there is a decrease of 1800 for it to balance. Okay, your total volume must be the same on top and bottom. So on the right side, if there's extra 180, uh, 1800, then on the left side, there must be a decrease of 1,800. Now, every bottle decreases. There is a decrease of... three hundred. So, how many bottles are there? Remember, I said the decrease has to be 1,800. So, if every bottle is a decrease of 300 then the number of bottles will be 1,800 divided by 300, which is 6. So that's actually 6 times of this. How many big containers? 6 big containers. How much pancake mi mixture was there? Now using the big one, right, you can just find the volume for the big one, and then you double it, because that's basically half of the total. So 6 times 375 for 6 big bottles. This will be 2,250. And the total pancake mixture will be twice of that. 4,500 ml. Okay, again, Y times 2 because the big and the small is actually half each. See, half Half into big, half into small. So you just need 2 times 2. You don't need to find out what is this because you will end up with 2250 again. Alright, question 14. A rectangular piece of paper, RSVX, is folded at two of its corners as shown. VT equals to VU. Okay. And you have this 18 degrees. So find angle VUT. So VUT, this one um is the corner of the rectangle, so this is 90 degrees. Uh you have isosceles triangle. So you just take 180 minus 90, then 90 divided by 2. Okay, so this one is 45 degrees. Next, find x, w, u. This angle over here. Now, this angle over here. If you were to draw what it looks like before it's folded. it will look like that, right? 
And this one is the same as this angle here. So we are going to um, find out what is this angle here first. Okay, so that angle there is actually because you have right angle here. So R W X. R W X is 180 minus 90 minus 18, which is 72 degrees. So this is 72, the other two angles are equal. So 180 minus 72, then divide by 2. Okay, so angle XWU is 180 minus 72, then divide by 2. This will give us uh, 54 degrees. So here angle XWU is 54 degrees. Question 15. Figure below is made up of a quadrant and a circle overlapping each other. Quadrant touches the circles at point F and G. The circle is center O. This is center O. There's supposed to be an O here. It has a diameter of 24. Find the area of the shaded parts. Okay, so to find the unshaded part, technically you can find the quadrant minus the unshaded. You get the two uh, shaded parts. Then uh, the, the other two will be the circle minus the unshaded part. Okay, so what I want to do is to find to find the uh, unshaded part. Okay, how do I find unshaded part? Unshaded part is made up of a semicircle and a triangle. Then uh, if this is the radius, And this will be, uh, sorry, if that's the diameter, then this will be the radius, which is 12. So this is 12. Okay, so uh, 24 divided by 2 equals 12. This is the radius. Now, if I want to find the semicircle, area of the semicircle, I'll take half times pi times radius times radius. Okay, so... Uh, unshaded semicircle half times pi times radius times radius which is 226.08 then the triangle at the bottom here yeah, half times base times height so half times 24 times 12 so unshaded triangle half times 24 times 12, which is 144. So the unshaded parts will be 226.08 plus 144. Two two six point zero eight plus one four four is three seven zero point zero eight. Then uh let's find a quadrant first. So the quadrant
Okay, how do we know what's the radius of the quadrant? It's uh it's actually here. Okay, the one in blue. So that is the radius of the quadrant, which is also the diameter of the circle. Right, so the radius of the quadrant is actually 24 as well. So to find quadrant is 1 quarter times pi times 24 times 24, which is 452.16. Okay, maybe let's name this A, B, C, D. So to find A and B, shaded, shaded, a plus B, we will take the quadrant 452.16 minus of the unshaded part, which is 370.08. Then to find uh, C, Sorry, C and D. We will take the circle minus away the unshaded part. So circle will be pi times radius times radius. Four five two. 0.16 also, then you minus off the unshaded part, which technically is the same as your C and uh, A and B, right? Because we are basically doing the same steps. So we're going to minus the same numbers again, right? So 452.16 minus off the shade, uh, unshaded part. This will also give us 82.08. So the total shaded is this and this. So 164.16 square cm is the answer. Okay, question 16. Miss Wong received uh, 6,120 from selling some bags and some dresses. She received $3,240 more for the bags than the dresses. Four times as many bags as dresses were sold. Each dress cost $15 more than each bag. How much did Miss Wong receive for the bags? Okay, so when we talk about the amount of money, right? What, what do we have? We have the total amount from selling everything, the bags and the dresses. And then we also have the difference in the amount. So basically, we are comparing the bags and the dresses. Uh, more for the bags. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Difference is 3240. The total is 6120. How much did she receive for the bags? So you take 6120 minus 3240 then divide by 2 that is for the dresses then we need to add 3240 to get the bags 
So answer $4,680. How many dresses did she sell? Okay, so um, now what we need to do is to put in, bring in the picture of the quantity. Okay, there are four times as many bags as dresses sold. So earlier on, we only talked about the value. So in terms of quantity, what I'll do is, I know the bags will be four times, right? So in this value model, I can't cut it into four because this one is talking about value. So I'll write here four groups of bags and one group of dresses because the quantity for bags is four times. So what have we found? We have actually found um, four groups of bags as well as one group of dresses. So one group of dresses is uh, 1440. Four groups of bags is your 4680. Now I want to compare one group of dresses and one group of bags. Okay, I want to see what is the difference because because technically one dress versus one bag is a uh, difference is $15. So let's compare one group of dresses and one group of bags. So one group of bags will be 4680 divided by 4. 1170. Now let's compare one group of bags versus one group of dresses. 1440 minus 1170, which is $217. Now imagine one group of dresses. This is one group and one group of bags. This difference here is actually uh, 270. Dress cost more. Okay. So here is dress cost more, so minus 270. In this direction, it's a difference of 270. Yeah. 270 less. The bag is 270 less. But every bag, every bag uh, is $15 less. So here, it's minus 15. So if I take 270, I divide by 15. What am I actually finding? I'm actually finding how many sets of this of this this 15 15s are there, right? Or in other words, how many items are there in one group? Okay, so number of items in one group. 270 divided by 15, which is 18. So every group, there are 18 items. Question is asking how many dresses is, did Miss Wong sell? Go back to this. She sold one group of dresses. So one group has 18 items. Answer is 18 dresses. Okay, so 18 times 1. Because there's only one group. Okay, this is the number of groups. And last question. Ali, Brandon, Carrie, and Devi shared uh, sum of money equally at first. Ali gave two-thirds of its money to Brandon. What fraction of the sum of money did Ali have in the end? Okay, so uh, let's do ratio. Before change after, they started off equal, so 1 to 1 to 1. 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. Ali gave 2 thirds, so that's a proportion transfer. A minus 2 thirds. So again, proportion transfer, you need to do your BCA below. Starting with 3 units, give, oops. Give away two units and you're left with one unit. 
and gave to Brandon. So Brandon will add. But it's not at two third. Lah. So Ali if Ali gave away two units, so Brandon will receive two units. Please do not write plus two third because Brandon there is an increase for Brandon, but it's not increased by two third. Okay, two third is referring to Ali's share. Alright, um before we continue, ratio, ratio, let's find common base. Common base is Ali at first. So this is a one. I'm gonna change this to a three. So everything changed to three. Now let's figure out what's the new ratio in the end. Ali would have, uh, after giving away two units, would have one unit left. Then for Brandon, Brandon started off with three units. He received two more units. So that's a five. And no change for C and D. So Ali had one unit out of the total. What is the total? This is internal transfer, so the total wouldn't change. I'll just take three units times four, which is the total at first, which is also the total in the end. So how much did, uh, what fraction did he get? One out of 12. Ali, one unit. Total 12 units. If you were to add all of these up, you get 12 as well. Next, Brandon then gave one fifth to Carrie. Carrie then gave three eighths of her money, an additional fifty five to Debbie. Debbie had five nine five dollars in the end. How much was the sum of money they shared? Okay, so let's. I'm gonna do the same thing, starting with uh, one to five to three to three to uh draw out what Brandon gave to carry first. Okay, I want to find what is the new ratio there. So A, B, C, D, 1, 5, 3, 3. Brandon gave 1 fifth, which is 5, take away 1, left 4. Brandon gave to Carrie, so Carrie would be a plus, plus what? Not plus one fifth. Again, whatever Brandon gave is what Carrie received. If Brandon gave away one unit, Carrie would receive one unit. And what is the ratio in the end? Remember, uh, ratios, if there's more than one set, you need to find common base. What is the common base here and here? So the common base is B at first, which is already five units. So you don't need to change anything. So you can look at this and figure out what's all the units here. A, A no change, so A is still one. B is four in the end. C, you have to add one, so three plus one, which is four. And no change for D, which is still three units. So this is the ratio here after Brandon gave to Carrie. Now, let's look at Carrie. Carrie gave three eighths of her money and additional $55 to Debbie. So let's figure out from this ratio, how much did Carrie give to Debbie? Or how much did Debbie have in the end? So Carrie gave away, let's find 3 eighths of her money first. 3 eighths of 4 units is 3 eighths times 4 U. Carrie has 4 units here. This will give us 1.5 units. So Devi, in the end, would be 3 units plus the 1.5 units from Carrie as well as $55. Okay, so this is 4.5 units plus 55. And they said that Devi had $595 in the end. So 4.5 units plus 55 is actually for, sorry, 595.
So 4.5 units is 5.95 minus 55, 540. Then we find one unit, 540 divided by 4.5 which is 120. And then the last step, what is the sum of money they shared? So the total sum of money will be 12 units. You can, all these are all internal transfers. So the 12 units will still remain the same as long as your ratio didn't change. Okay, you didn't change the, the ratio to another equivalent ratio. So the total will still be 12. Just to check here, 12, here, 12. 12, 12. So yes, I can safely say that the total is still 12 units. So 12 units is 12 times 1, 2, 0. Which is 1, 4, 4, 0. Final answer, remember to write dollar sign. Okay, with that, that's the end of uh, ITOM prelim 2023, paper 2.